Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a this is not a top 10 and there actually is a note that I overlooked and the only reason this video is happening is because one of you actually reached out and said, hey man, did you ever do a uh, this is not a top 10 galbanum perfume episode? And I looked and sure enough, I didn't. I completely left out the note of galbanum. So thank you very much. You know who you are. I do try to listen to my subscribers, and to be honest, I love making these videos, and you know, I want my list of ingredient, this is not a top 10 videos, to be as complete as possible. Uh, I am going back and ranking them, so to leave out such an important note as Galvanum really feels like there's a hole in the, uh, you know, in the force, and I need to correct that. And so this is exactly what this video is going to be. It's going to be about fragrances in my collection that have the note of galbanum or fragrances that uh, I have samples of that I plan on talking about on the channel or talked about on the channel. It's a great way to explore fragrances. I've really enjoyed as my collection has grown and as my love of the uh, fragrance, the art of fragrances has grown as well. I've enjoyed exploring fragrances different than how I used to do it in the past. You know, in the past you would hear something get hyped and just run out and buy it. And what I've started to do lately is I've found either I've honed in on notes or, you know, in or accords or perfumers or something like that and hunted bottles down that way instead of what's been hyped. And I've had much more success with that because if I like galvanum, for example, I can hunt down galvanum perfumes and I've found I've had a much better hit rate on finding fragrances I love and learning about new things. So long story short, without getting into the nitty gritty because I am not a perfumer, uh, but when I smell galvanum, it has this very deep green, uh, almost balsamic, foresty, earthy, you know, feel to the, to the uh, note. I absolutely love galvanum. Uh, it is vital to a Shepra fragrance. Shepras um, have lots of galvanum in them historically or let's maybe not lots, but let's say it's a note that is very important to the creation of the Shepra fragrance. It gives it that woody balsamic element that's very important to Shepras, and it makes it very rich. It makes it rich and deep and green, and some people don't like green perfumes. Some people don't like green perfumes at the start of their journey, and then they end up growing on them. Uh, so let's do scent of the day real quick, and then we'll get into this. I don't want this video to be 12 hours long, so let's get moving. Um, said to the day is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. You know, there are some fragrances that when I wear it and smell it, I just almost like shake my head, you know, just like, wow, this is just amazing. I wore this, I was just in awe of this fragrance all day today. This is Pure Distance M. And it says the perfumer's Roja Dove. And if Roja Dove actually perfumed this, um, he is truly a master perfumer because this is brilliant stuff. Uh, this is bergamot, lemon, and you know, when you first spray today, I realized something about Pure Distance M, which is uh, tragically discontinued. Uh, but Pure Distance M, um, on my skin today, again, it's December 20th, so it is a little bit cool, which is usually the best time to wear a leather fragrance like this, but I noticed the spices really stood out a lot more today. I got a lot more cinnamon, maybe even a little cumin, uh, it had a little bit of that feel in the opening, which I did not get when I wore it in warmer weather last time. So it was a very interesting wear. I loved every second of it. And that cystus resinous leather dry down with a touch of just a touch of vanilla is just perfect. It's beautiful. Uh, the spicy leather, beautiful. All right, let's get into this. So first galbanum fragrance we're going to discuss today is going to be a new Ur fragrance in my collection. This is Etienne Eigner, number one. And I have to decant this because even though I got a great deal on this bottle, this sprayer, when you spray, the juice just kind of like flows out of the bottom of the uh, atomizer right here and spills down the side. Uh, so I need to decant this into a little atomizer where I can actually use it. But uh, this is a fantastic fragrance for lovers of vintage fragrances like myself. Uh, it has that 70s feel. You know, yesterday I wore Captain Molino to bed, and that's a beautiful fragrance as well. Lovely oak moss in the dry down. The vintage bottle anyway. I hear the new one shite. But uh, if you're a fan of those kind of fragrances, check this out. It opens up with that galvanum, marjoram, clary sage, and it dries down to this 
uh, way punches way above its weight class. You know, it feels like real ambergris and expensive iris, and and it's just such a great masculine. I wish they made stuff like this, like uh, still. But uh, this is from 1975, and it's long discontinued. Eigner number one. Okay, next fragrance on the list. We're going to stay with the house of Etienne Eigner. And this is a little bit of a unicorn. So if you're really into hunting rare beasts, this may be one to look for. This is Super Fragrance from Etienne Eigner. And this is a little 15 mil job I picked up. Uh, and I have, luckily I have two of these because they're very hard to find. I'd love a big bottle, but it's just so hard to find. And, um, I've got a little bit of juice left in this one. And then I'm going to, before this is all gone, you know, I will, um, I will hit the back up and, you know, use it and talk about it and do a full, full review on the channel. I just realized there is something in here. There's something in this. Uh, what is it? What are you? I don't know if it's like a hair or what, but... Huh, interesting. There's definitely something in there. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's see. See it in there? Right there? Hiding in my juice? What are you, buddy? What are you? Um, well... I can tell you that this fragrance is way ahead of its time. It's spicy, it's woody, it's got tarragon, which you know is one of my favorite notes, and galbanum. Uh, and it also has iris, uh, but unlike um, number one, which came out in 1975, this one came out a couple years later in 78, and it's much more dirty in the dry down. It has this costus note, which gives it this... Um, little bit of a wet dog-like feel, I would say, is a great way to describe Costas, you know, like a bed that an animal slept in and it hasn't been washed lately. It has that musky, animalic uh, dry down, which really, uh, you know, foreshadows what we got to see once the 80s rolled around, my favorite decade. So Eigner, uh Super Fragrance, also has Galbanum. And finally, a fragrance I'm taking a little bit of leeway on because... Uh, I don't know for sure if there's galbanum in here. I'm just trusting the old nose uh, because all it says is green notes. Galbanum could be a green note, but there is this fennel-like smell here, which you don't get with the rest of them. Uh, but this is silver, Eigenair silver. Um, probably my favorite from the house, to be honest. Uh, in my opinion, this is very close to Balenciaga's Portos. It has... Uh, you know, similarities with Portos. Maybe not very similar, but they play in the same sandbox. And um, I would say this is maybe even a little bit more wearable version of Portos. Portos, that castorium really hits you. And there is castorium and labdanum and leather here, which I love. But there's this spruce note. Uh, and when you mix that with the fennel and what I think is galbanum in the top and the old school carnation and patchouli, it makes it a little bit more wearable to me. Um, you know, Portos is big and bold and brash, and I love that, uh, but if I wanted to wear one of these two to work, I would probably wear silver to work. It's a little bit more elegant, and it only came out two or three years after Portos, I think. Maybe four, but it, it was a couple years after Portos came out, and it's also discontinued. All of those Eigner fragrances I started with are discontinued, unfortunately. Okay, let's talk about a fragrance that's not discontinued, and this is... One of the greatest Bertrand du Chaffors of all time. Uh, and the galbanum in here will literally knock you off of your chair. If you're if you're a galbanum lover, this is some of the best galbanum I've ever smelled. It's uh, MDCI's Chypra Palatin. And Chypra Palatin is... I think it's a masterpiece, honestly. Um, how he managed to weigh in you know, balance so perfectly, almost like laser precision, you know, this outdoor green garden, you smell this green galbanum and hyacinth in the opening with just a touch of clementine. And it really feels like you're outdoors, like you're standing in a garden. And then all of a sudden, it's like you're brought back down to earth and you get the resins. And it brings you back to feeling like you're smelling an old school oriental, but it's a sheepra, you know, it's a sheepra, but it's an oriental, but it's 
green and fresh in the opening and there's herbs and thyme and lavender but there's also the castorium and the tolu balsam and the vanilla and a touch of plum a touch of fruit it's just everything is so perfect every time i wear this i'm in awe um and if you focus on the galbanum in the beginning of the fragrance you will notice just how important it is to the composition cheaper palaton masterpiece now I know that's expensive, so and I don't talk about clone brands very much, but just to be brief, uh, I will talk about one right now um, that I think is very good. You know, I found this pretty much on my own um, just because I was curious. You know, these clone brands always talk about, oh, we can make the same fragrance 99% for $40 instead of $280 or $350 or $500 or whatever it is. So I bought this, and you know what? This is a good fragrance. This is probably one of the better clones I've ever smelled. And it's from the house of Alexandria Fragrances and it's called La Chipra. And so this is an extra de parfum concentration. It smells like the ingredients are pretty damn high quality, to be honest with you. Obviously, uh, Chipra Palatine is the better composition by far. You can, you can tell. Um, one thing that you'll notice with many clones is that the sweetness is amped up a little bit. Like the qual, like you know, um, the quality of the notes just isn't exactly spot on, but they are damn close. And if you're on a budget, you're a college kid or something, or you know, um, you just don't want to spend a lot on a perfume. You just want to spend. You want to get in the ballpark. You don't really care if it's perfectly cheap or Palatine. If you can just wear this and enjoy this fragrance, I think you would like it. Um, Le Chipre, I'd still love a full bottle of Chipre Palatine one day, but uh, Le Chipre is kind of a cool little thing to have. I'll, I'll throw that on before bed sometimes. Okay, a newer discovery of mine, and I had to buy like 30 mils in these little 2 mil vials, but I don't care. I'm glad to have the older version. Uh, this is, Amouage has two fragrances that highlight green notes in a stunning fashion, and neither of them are very popular Amouages, but for the niche heads for the people who um you know for the people who are really into fragrances the way we are you know as an art form and they love fragrances and they think about fragrances all day and stuff like that these are the ones that you might want to kind of go for off the beaten path so this is called Amouage Opus 7 and they actually named it once Rene Salmon came in they never named Opuses before um but some of them now have names and uh, this one's called Reckless Leather. Uh, and this is Galbanum, Cardamom, Nutmeg, Fenugreek. Someone told me that Fenugreek, I think, has a little bit of like a baby herb smell or something like that, like an upchuck, like a baby's uh, throw up. And you know what's funny is, is I was wearing this the other day. I wore this as my scent of the day the other day. And all I could think about is a baby throwing up on a Galbanum plant. Uh, with cardamom and oud, and what's amazing is this very interesting note of costus root in the dry down. Uh, one of the best costus root notes I've ever smelled, uh, and it says it's inspired by, oh, wait a minute, that's not it. Uh, it's a green, woody, and leather fragrance evoking a ju the juxtaposition of harmony with intensity of recklessness, and you know what? That's a very interesting way to put it, and um, there's a big throw to this fragrance because there's ambroxan and there's muscone in the base, sandalwood, frankincense, of course, and cypriol. And I am a big fan. I'm glad I got these. I'm glad I can talk about them on the channel. Um, uh, I would be curious to see if there's a reformulation, but honestly, I'm just happy I got the older batches. I don't trust Amouage all of a sudden, you know, what kind of what they've done has put my antennas on notice. So another green fragrance that is a little more fresh, but it is still beast mode. This is, I mean, one of the strongest fragrances I've ever smelled in my life. This is Beach Hut Man by Amouage. Now, um, I will say the same thing I've said before, that uh, rumor is that there are potentially reformulations. So if you come to me and say, hey, I got the one that says Beach Hut Man down here, and it's not beast mode. What are you talking about? That's probably why. Try to hunt an older bottle that says it on the side, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. This is green and a little bit more fresh uh, because there's orange blossom and mint in the opening, but the galvanum is still front and center. This is more, instead of Beach Hut on a beach, 
This is Beach Hut in a uh, jungle. Think about that. Think about, look at the outline of the Beach Hut right here. See it? Uh, and imagine a Beach Hut in a jungle. Uh, and that's the vibe here. There's ivy growing on it. There's mosses. There's um, vetiver, which is very earthy. And there's a little bit of myrrh because it's amouage. Of course, you need some resins and woods and patchouli. And um, this stuff lasts forever in a day. It is so huge. And usually I will wear it in spring or even summer. I'll wear this in summer. I don't care because I love wearing green fragrances in summer. But um, yeah, most people may even smell that and say, that's got to be a winter fragrance because it is huge. Uh, and finally... There's a, a fragrance that many people don't think has galbanum in it because they're so focused on the rose and the pine, frankincense, and lime, and that's Lyric Man. But there actually is a very interesting galbanum note in the mid here, and it mixes with the ginger. Um, and again, this is one of the bottles that has it written right here. So again, I've heard there could potentially be reformulation. I don't know. I've never done a comparison myself. But this has one of my favorite green combinations. One thing I've noticed, and I'll point it out again in a couple fragrances when we get there, but there's a combination of two notes, Angelica and Galbanum. And I absolutely love, I, I am in love with that combination. When it comes to green notes, just like I've said before, I love iris and leather combined. Combining Galbanum and Angelica for me just does something magical every time. And I'll show you a couple of the other ones. Uh, this is one. This is one of my favorite niche rose fragrances. Although I do have to say real quick, I wore uh, lipstick rose to bed. My that vintage bottle I found that was the original run of Frederick Mall, where it had like you know the alcohol percentage right there on the front of the bottle. Uh, it would have been a matte cap if there was a cap, but it didn't have a uh, it didn't have a hat. But um, I, I love that rose. That, that was an amazing, beautiful, the way that he recreated that lipstick vibe with the rose. I, I would totally wear that. Even though it's marketed towards women, I, I love lipstick rose. It was amazing. Uh, okay, next we're going to talk about, I guess you could call this an indie house, but this was very kindly sent to me by Al Manzano. Al, thank you. Um, Thank you a lot. I thank you very much. I know we had a chance to chat the other day, and I know this was not a cheap gift, so thank you. Uh, this is Anna Zwarinkina. Anna Zwarinkina. And this is called Queer de Russi. So her take on a Russian leather. This is a very spicy, leathery, tarry. Tar is a good way to describe this fragrance. Uh, it really does have this tar-like, you know... Um, deep, black, dark, resinous vibe with galbanum, mugwort, uh, yuzu, absinthe, tobacco, clove, ambrette, castorium, ambergris. Uh, it really does feel like you're smelling an Arige la Dore or Bortnikov or, or something of that quality. It's, it's very, very good. And, you know, this has made me want to try more from the house. Okay. Next on the list is an Aramis fragrance, and this is called Devon. So I talked about this fragrance the other day, and uh, this is one of my favorite Galvanum fragrances of all time, period. Uh, I'll, you know, this is an unranked list. I know I mentioned that MDCI, uh, Sheeper Palaton, is one of my favorite Galvanum fragrances, and or get fragrances with a note of galbanum in it, and Devon's another, and I'll mention a couple others of my favorite as we get there, but uh, Devon is a 77 creation from Bernard Chant, and if you like Alliage, if you like number 19, if you like those kind of fragrances, you have to try Devon. I think it is absolutely outrageous the way that he mixed that aldehydic opening with that uh, galbanum in the top, and the way Bernard Chant does aldehydes is out of this world. It's completely uh, different from anything I've ever smelled. I, I don't know how he's kind of uh, created that aldehydic top that's been so different from anything I've ever smelled, uh, but Devin, I think, is a, is a masterpiece, and these older bottles are the ones that you want to go for, in my opinion. 
Um, you know, the new ones are still good. Aramis never made bad fragrances, but Devon had this castorium-like leathery animalic dry down that really with the oak moss that really is important to the scent and it feels like it's missing in the new one from from what I uh, from what I hear so go for the vintage if you can okay next is a sheep fragrance but it smells kind of like a fougere this is a little bit of a you know cross boundary fragrance it's spicy it's green uh, this is a vintage bottle with a short ingredient list I'll show you right here on the back there, you can see the short ingredient list. Some people will say, oh, you only have to go for the one that says uh, S-I-R-P-E-A. Don't go for the Waruska and Joel version. BS. If you can get one that has a short ingredient list, all they did was move manufacturing in-house. They kind of took it in-house. Uh, and so, doesn't matter. Uh, just, if you can get one with the short ingredient list, that, that would be my recommendation. This is a spicy green fragrance that will remind you a little bit of Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, but it's technically a Chypre, not a Fougere. So it's like this blend. Uh, but if you like those kind of fragrances from the 70s and 80s, green, lavender, rosemary, it's the rosemary probably plays a big part of adding to the Paco Rabanne Pour Homme feel. Um, but it goes in a little different direction. There's galbanum and clove and blackcurrant here. And of course, the oak moss and, and leather and stuff like that and the dry down, beautiful perfume. Uh, okay, next on the list, we've got a Bois 1920 fragrance and a house I don't talk about very much because they've kind of ruined uh, my trust in them. They, uh, uh, I think for, if you go watch, go, go to Rich Mitch's channel and just type in Bois 1920 and you'll find the video he did on them. Uh, they had something a little bit shady go on and it kind of turned me off from the house. Basically, they used to offer their fragrances in Eau de Toilette, and he bought a, a fragrance from Amazon that was in an Eau de Toilette box, but an Eau de Parfum bottle showed up, and when he complained, they said, oh, sorry, third-party seller, and sorry, we can't do anything about it, which, you know, I, I would bet my house uh, that they, Amazon is not in there switching Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum bottles. Most likely that was probably from the company, but who knows? Uh, but they just said, sorry, we can't help you. Uh, it wasn't our fault. But uh, he wanted the Eau de Toilette because he had said the Eau de Parfum smells different in Real Patchouli, which is one of our favorite patchoulis. We each only have one bottle because we couldn't find any more. They disappeared very quickly. So go for the Eau de Toilettes in this house, from this house is my opinion. Don't go for the Eau de Parfums. Uh, which is all they make now. I think they only do Eau de Parfums now. So if you can find the vintage Eau de Toilettes, do it. But this is Vetiver Ambrato. And this is a beautiful Vetiver Amber, as the name says. But there's this green galbanum and tobacco combo in the dry down. And there's also green Artemisia in the top. And so when you mix that with the Vetiver and the um, Labdanum and, and Vanilla, it's a it's a very interesting take on a DNA like uh, there's a little bit of Shalimar from that uh, from that vanilla in the in the base and the way that the bergamot spices and vanilla kind of play together but it goes its own way it's a beautiful composition no one talks about and um, I'm, I'm a big fan of that one okay now this is maybe to some people one of the greatest masculines of all time that no one talks about. And I can see why. I like my masculines dirt, more dirty or more leathery. or But I could totally see. If this is your thing, this could be one of the most amazing fragrances you've ever smelled. This is Estee Lauder's Louder for Men. And rumor is, this is basically on the way out. So, the vintages are all gold. Okay, so this cap right here is all gold. See how mine's green right here and gold on top? The original ones are all gold. To me... I think they're both amazing. I don't think you have to go get a vintage. Would I love a vintage? Sure. Is it stronger? Yes. Is the oak moss more? Yes, I think so. But um, uh, do you have to get go get one? No. This is an amazing, you know, if you just want to spend 80 bucks and you just want to go, you know, to estelouder.com and buy it and you don't want to worry about, bat, you know, vintage batches and hunting down and going to eBay or Mercari, this could be your fragrance. It's a beautiful green anise galbanum to get opening it's very herbal 
and there's an old school carnation note in the heart that is just to die for with this mossy um ambery sandalwood cedarwood patchouli dry down it's beautiful very sparkling uh very green very 80s in, in a way very 80s it has a little bit of funk but nothing like it's it's counterparts in the 80s nothing like koros or antaeus or stuff like that uh okay speaking of animalic and dirty though uh this is a fragrance with galbanum in the top that uh if you're a fan of of old school vintage fragrances this should be in your collection this is yatagan and i've got two bottles of this i have an older bottle than this actually as well and um spicy woody it opens up with tarragon galbanum and and lavender and you get lots of pine lots of pine and leather uh this would compete with rocha's Makassar for the green leather combo beast you know uh and so i'm a big fan of yatagan i have a backup bottle uh beautiful green leathery fragrance spicy woody too with castorium okay probably one of my favorite uh galbanum fragrances of all time right up there with Devon and Sheeper Palaton is number 19. So number 19, this is the Eau de Toilette. This is a vintage Eau de Toilette bottle. Rumor is the really old Eau de Toilettes from back in the day um, were the really, really old ones used Iranian galbanum, very rare Iranian galbanum. And this fragrance came out in 1971. And so whenever the Iran-Iraq war was going on, apparently the uh, Iranian gal galbanum could no longer be sourced because of the war. So Chanel had to find a different supplier. And some people say they never were able to replicate the quality of the Iranian galbanum that was originally in the bottles from the 1970s. I have no clue how old this splash bottle is. All I know is um, I got it from Anuj, I think, at Enchante. And, you know, it's got a short ingredient list. So my guess is 90s, early 2000s. I, I don't know. Um, all I know is this is a stunning, and I like the Eau de Toilette. The reason I, I actually own a backup of um, this fragrance because I love it so much, especially in the spring, it's just a, a a stunner it's a jaw drop stunner um you know it's leathery dry down the floral heart is outrageous with that chanel posh iris uh and hyacinth and the roll i mean the flowers the freshness the you know the green floral take is uh one of the best i mean easily you could say when i rank this video that will be very close to the top and then there's a fragrance that I took a little bit of leeway on because it doesn't actually say galbanum. It says green notes again. But I'm going to say there's a little bit of that Chanel posh sparkly uh, number 19 green galbanum opening here. And this is 31 Rue Cambon. This is the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Toilette would probably be just as well. But I have the Eau de Parfum. I love it. Uh, so I can't complain at all. It's so good. It's so posh. I mean, these two are two of the most posh. I mean, you wear this as a man or a woman. Um, but I think as a man, it's a little different because most men are wearing Y Eau de Parfum or something like that. You know, you walk out wearing this, you really show everybody how much class you have. This is a classy fragrance. This takes uh, experience and knowledge and understanding and, um, you know, this, I think, really shows that you put in that extra effort to me. It's it's so posh. I love this. I love this fragrance. I'm a huge fan of this. Can't believe I took so long to get it. I'm so happy to have this in my collection. Thank you, Bri. Okay, next on the list, we have a Clive Christian fragrance. And believe it or not, there is a Clive Christian, a green Clive Christian fragrance. I don't talk about very much because I'm not the biggest fan of. Is it good? Yes. Would I buy this again once this runs out? No, absolutely not. Uh, this is 1872 for men by uh, Giza Schoen created this. And my new favorite Giza Schoen is Kinski for men, 100%. Uh, I sent it to Armando and he came back and said he really liked it as well. But uh, I don't know if he liked it as much as I did, but I love, I think Kinski for Men is his greatest 
accomplishment. This is more for someone that wants to wear something that is a little easier to uh, pull off. It's it's more acceptable to the general person than something like Kinski. Uh, this is green and fresh, galbanum, lavender, lots of citruses, pineapple, bergamot, grapefruit, orange, peach, rosemary, petit gras, lots of florals in the heart, and kind of this patchouli, ambery, frankincense, cedar-like dry down. It's very green and fresh and citrusy, and it feels like a beautiful summer fragrance. And that's kind of my problem, is when you're spending this kind of money on a niche fragrance, it should be more than just a eh, nice summer fragrance. So, you know, um, take with that what you will. It says, virility is given a delicate and refined touch in this complex of deep woody textures infused with a gentle spice. It's okay. Uh, I'm glad to have it because I can talk about it. I can do a video on it at some point in the future, but I would not buy that again. Uh, okay, now let's talk about a Creed. In 2011, Creed put out one of my favorite Creeds of all time. Oh man, just smelling it from the little rag around the outside. Uh, this is Royal Oud. This is a 500 ml bottle. I, I love this stuff, man. Uh, Royal Oud is uh, woody, spicy. Julian Rascanet, a student of uh, Pierre Bourdon, created this. And um, you could go back and make a comparison to French Lover. They both have that Angelica Galbanum combination that I was talking about that I love so much. Angelica and Galbanum is an unbelievable combination. Um, and Royal Oud is kind of one of my forever scents, to be honest with you. Love Royal Oud. Even though, you know, the Oud in the base is very Western style, there's no funk, uh, I still love wearing that. They also have a fragrance that I'm going to do an early impression video on because I found this in like a drawer, not even with where it should have been. It was just thrown somewhere the other day. Uh, and this is called Pure White Cologne. I must have got this long ago when I bought a Creed and, you know, they sent it to me for free and I threw it in a drawer and completely forgot about it. But uh, I wore it to bed the other day. And you know what? It's not bad for just a clean white. There's pear, there's galbanum, neroli, lots of citruses. There's a little bit of uh, rice flour, white musk and ambergris, that Creed ambergris. Uh, they charge like $900 for a bottle of this fragrance, which is absolutely insane. If this was 100 bucks, this could easily be someone's like summer signature scent. It's so fresh and citrusy and, and uplifting, and the name is perfect, Pure White Cologne. It's, it's very, um, it feels pure. I mean, it feels like you're, feels like you're smelling like, uh, I don't know, like an angel or... Not like a like an actual angel, like something pure and clean, and it's a it's a but it doesn't last is the problem. You'd have to reapply. So for a nine hundred dollar fragrance, you'd have to spray every couple hours. But it is good. I'll I'll do an early impression video, and then we've got a Dior. This is Miss Dior. Uh, this is the Esprit de Parfum, and my God, man, I ah, uh, I got this from Manouge. There is something so captivating about this. Uh, now, this is an older Christian Dior bottle before they changed the name to Dior. Try to get older versions if you can. Uh, this is Galbanum, Bergamot, Sage, Gardenia, with Carnation, Jasmine, Narcissus, Neroli, Rose, Oak Moss, Labdanum, Patchouli, and Sandalwood. And there's something about the, the uh, Galbanum, Sage combination in the opening uh, with the florals. And then somehow, you know, Edmund Rudnitska, the master, built this accord that comes across as smelling a bit. There's, it feels like there's a tobacco note in here, tobacco vibe to me. But it's so amazing, so deep, such a beautiful Shepra, perfect Shepra. And again, I mentioned how important Galvanum was to Shepras. Uh, speaking of Dior, in 1969, uh, Guy Robert put out this. Your essence, and I'm guessing here again because it says green notes. I'm guessing there's galbanum in in Dior essence. Not 100% sure, but it's aldehydic, uh, citrusy in the opening, beautiful floral heart with violets, rose, carnation, ylang ylang, cinnamon, and orris. So it's a little bit powdery, but it dries down to this oriental, 
benzoin, oak moss, musk, patchouli, styrax, vanilla, vetiver. Uh, lovely, L absolute, again, amazing floral Shepra. These are, these are two of the best Shepra fragrances that very few people talk about. And then I want to talk about some Guerlain's. Uh, let's talk about, actually, before we do Guerlain, uh, let us talk about a couple samples. Let's do a Ducita sample. So this is called Les Cierges Blanc, and this is a green Chypre that, uh, I think she mentioned it was, it was, uh, inspired by a very old fragrance. I forget which one. Was it Bandi or was it... Which fragrance inspired her? I forget. Um, but it says the opening, a rich and opening, a rich, bittersweet orange blossom and neroli combo, a calming quintessential living in the moment fragrance, gently warmed by a sweet, almost mystical essence of ylang ylang. So the galbanum, the artemisia, the tobacco, orange blossom, ambrette, patchouli, uh, and I'll do an early impression video on Les Cierges Blanc before that juice is gone. And then we've got a couple Frederick Malls. So we have the aforementioned French Lover, which Pierre Bourdon's name is on the bottle with that Angelica Galbanum combination, which is out of this world. Uh, there's a beautiful iris note in here, which is missing from Royal Oud. Uh, but... Somehow this feels more, even though it has that posh iris, it feels a little bit more dirty, uh, as in like forced floor dirty. I think it's the vetiver and frankincense. I'm not sure, but uh, whatever it is, I, I would love a vintage bottle of French Lover, you know, pre-Estee Lauder. Uh, and then there's a fragrance that came out a year or so ago in 2021 called Synthetic Jungle. And Synthetic Jungle, I'll do an early impression before this is gone. Uh, one of the most beautiful basil openings. Basil, Lily of the Valley, Jasmine, Galbanum, and Patchouli. Beautiful green. This is a great take. You know how I mentioned Beach Hut Man is green, 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 jungle green? This is also jungle green. Um, I think I prefer Beach Hut Man, but Synthetic Jungle is very good. And then... Uh, let's talk about a Jeffrey Bean, and this is gray flannel. So I showed you my really old bottle of gray flannel the other day where it had all of the writing inside, uh, and this is such a beautiful take. Violet leaf, this, you know, an original violet leaf opening with galbanum, petigran, bergamot, geranium, iris, mimosa, narcissus, rose, violet, sage. Uh, I think when young people smell this, they don't know what to think is what it is. I think they're just so, it's such a smell that's so different from everything they're so used to smelling. And because they've seen it at like TJ Maxx for $9, they just laugh at it. They don't understand. They don't give it a chance. Beautiful fragrance. Really reminds me of being outdoors. The galbanum in the florals with that almondy dry down, stunning. Uh, Al Manzano said he gets compliments all the time on on gray flannel, so uh, it is it is not a scent to be trifled with. Is is what I would say. Uh, give it a chance. At least give it a chance. Wear it on your skin. Try to find an older bottle. You know, one that says UTIF, so you know it's you know pre the mid 90s or whatever it is um okay let's talk about a Givenchy this is called Satis de Givenchy and this is another beautiful Chypre you can see we're talking about a lot of Chypres because um Galbanum is an important part of Chypres this is amazing this vintage bottle of, of Satis someone told me the new bottle's trash which is not shocking but you know this is an amazing floral Chypre by Dominique Ropion nonetheless uh beautiful green galbanum with this fruity coconutty honeyed floral uh but it dries down to this animalic you know bay rum uh they say there's a bay rum note i can't say i've ever gotten a bay rum note but there is this celebration this is like a celebration in a bottle it's beautiful um okay next on the list we have a guerlain and this is shamad edt 
And this and Dior Essence are tied at the hip. They both came out in 69. Uh, they are the two closest fragrance I've ever smelled to each other. And it's interesting they both came out in 69. I would love to know the story of how two houses came out with a fragrance that smelled almost identical in 1969. And then, not identical, but they're so close, there's no doubt about it that these two are kissing siblings, let's say. They're kissing cousins, okay? They're, they're right there. Uh, they're, they're right next to each other as far as composition and the way that the fragrance develops. I, I've never smelled anything like these two before or since, actually. I don't think I've ever smelled anything that's like Dear Lawn or Dear Essence. Um, and that's what makes it so interesting is it was like that point in time they released it and then no one's ever touched that DNA, at least that I know of. Floral, green, galvanum, you know, this has that lilac note that you'll get a little bit in Mitsuko. Uh, and the resins and the dry down has a little more of that Guerlainade compared to DR Essence, but they're both so, it's just unbelievable. I'm, I'm learning to love Shaman. Uh, and then there's also a fragrance that came out in 1933 called Val de Nuit. This is a beautiful, beautiful take on galbanum um, and iris and aldehydes and spices and that Guerlainade dry down. It's spicy. It's a little bit woody. If you're a guy, give Val de Nuit a, tr a try. It's a, it's a masterpiece. In the spring, Val de Nuit just absolutely shines. All right, let's talk about a Halston fragrance. Um, this is Halston 112. So this is discontinued. I cannot believe uh, that they discontinued 112. I just can't believe it. Uh, they also say they discontinued Z14, which is an absolute kick in the nuts because these were amazing perfumes. This is kind of like a spicy green... Uh, Little bit of a fougere, it goes in the direction of a fougere almost. You know, there's bergamot, there's basil, there's galbanum, lots of green, citrusy, fresh notes. But the thing about it is, there's this floral heart in 112 that I think kind of put some men off back in the day. This was 1976, this came out, according to Parfumo. Carnation, jasmine, lavender, pine, juniper, uh, with this cedar, vanilla, tonka, labdanum. Oak moss, amber, musk, dry down. Uh, very 70s. Extremely mossy 70s. Slightly barbershop. That's why I say it's it's a little bit like a barbershop fougere. Uh, but it's not, if that makes sense. It's It kind of goes its own direction. Halston 112. If you like vintage masculines, one to sniff out. Speaking of vintage, long discontinued masculines, um, this is an unbelievable fragrance no one talks about. I think because it's just so hard to find. Uh, but it came out in 1994, and it's called Catalyst. Beautiful, scientific test beaker, you know, uh, design. Love the bottle. Love the smell. There is a vodka note in here. It's so complex. It's so green, fresh, spicy, resinous, leather. Uh, it's It's everything. You could pick out all of these different facets. And it really does feel like they kind of put everything in there, mixed it up in the beaker test tube. And I mean, it's just a, amazing. I love the design. Now, mine is a Halston's ink version. I've never smelled the other version, whatever, ref, you know, I think Halston got sold while this fragrance was still in, in production. So I've never smelled the one that doesn't say Halston ink on the bottom, but I love Catalyst. Um, and then a fragrance I initially hated and I've come to love because I found the vintage. The new version is shit, in my opinion. Um, I think it's terrible. I think they should have discontinued this fragrance. It's One Man Show by Jacques Bogart. So look for these older bottles if you can. Um, they're out there. And not many people are going for One Man Show. So sometimes you can get a deal. Um, what a difference. I'm telling you, it makes... They, uh, they ruined this fragrance like the new one it's almost like there's no leather like there's no animalic uh all that harshness is gone it's just a green fragrance that smells like Crizia Womo but worse and so once I got my nose on the vintage I realized why people talked about this this is a beast this is a green leather beast uh that can compete with 
Yategan in Roshas, uh, Makassar, and stuff like that. There's a flanker, by the way, that has Galbanum in it called One Man Show Ood Edition. And this is an amazing, cheapy 20 bucks. You can get this for 20 bucks. This is absolutely stunning. If you like stuff like leather oud, uh, you have to put up with a little bit of synthetic in the in the when you first spray, but let it dry down. Uh, there's galbanum in the top with bergamot, red thyme, spices, geranium, oud, papyrus, patchouli, and leather. That dry papyrus, papery, leathery, oudy dry down will remind you of Dior's leather oud, a $300, $400 fragrance, and this is 20 bucks. Uh, they knocked it out of the park with this, in my opinion, for a cheapie. Keep your eye on the prize. It is a cheapie. Uh, okay, now here's another $20 fragrance no one talks about. This is uh, Vermeil for Men. And so Vermeil for Men is a spicy, woody, uh, fruity take. Uh, some say it's got hints of Davidoff, Davidoff, the original from 84. I don't think it has Davidoff, Davidoff hints as much. I think it reminds me a little bit of something like, uh, if you've ever smelled, Jacques Fat Pour L'Homme. I think it's a little bit of that. Um, but again, for 20 bucks is what I paid for this. Uh, it's green, it's fruity, there's violet leaf. You know, it's got a little bit of that gasoline vibe, that ozonic vibe. It's floral. It, uh, is a little musky in the base with woods and vetiver and patchouli and oak moss. It's an amazing masculine fragrance that's no one talks about. Nobody. I have no clue when this came out, by the way. This could have came out in the 70s. It could have came out in the 90s. And it feels like it came out in the 70s. I have no clue. All I know is if you can get a bottle of Vermeil for men I, and you like the kind of fragrances I like, go for it is what I would say. Go for it. Um, okay, let me show you a couple fragrances real quick that are extremely underrated. So this is Boss Sport. Boss Sport is, uh, I'm sorry, Boss Sport, what am I saying? This is uh, Boss Spirit. So Boss Spirit came out in 89. I think it's like the end of an era. Boss had the most amazing, like they sold their soul to get the best first three fragrances ever. Boss number one, Boss Sport, and Boss Spirit. What a start to a masculine house. And this is like green opening heaven. If you're a fan of green fragrances, you have to get your nose on Boss Spirit. Oh my God. It almost has this cannabis-like smell in the opening because it's so green. Mugwort, tarragon, galbanum, peppermint. Um, but it dries down to this ambery leather, woody leather. It's harsh and strong. I love it. I love Boss Spirit. Um, Chris from Scentland calls this sunshine in a bottle, these kind of fragrances. And I see why. I mean, you can see the yellow background, but um, it's, it's to me, it's, it's just representative of a, a better time, truly. To me, it, it's representative of a better time. The world is kind of shit right now. Uh, because no one's willing to stand up and say it's shit and do anything about it. And so we have a shit world. But back then, it just seems like it was a better time to me. Um, and I know that people say stuff like that all the time. It's easy to look back on things and imagine they were better. But no, I really think that things were, were better back then. Uh, but let me show you a very interesting take on Galbanum. Uh, Crazy Kritzia. So this is a oriental. This is going to be in the same vein as something like, um, if you like Calvin Klein's Obsession, imagine you took Obsession and mixed it with something like Must to Cartier Parfum, which I'll show you in a second. It's a beautiful green Galbanum Oriental with this labdanum resinous vanilla with a little bit of dirt, a little bit of civet in the dry down. But this is the Eau de Toilette. You can get the Eau de Toilette or the Eau de Parfum. There's even a pure parfum I've never smelled, but... For a Dominique Gropion creation, I got both. I got the Eau de Parfum and the Eau de Toilette in 100 mil. So I got 200 mils of juice for 80 bucks. You cannot find perfume of this quality for $80. I'm telling you. Uh, it's discontinued, but there are bottles still floating around out there. And it is a steal right now, in my opinion. Um, okay. Next, let me show you that must 
uh, de Cartier that I was talking about. So this is a vintage uh, 50 mil refill that I was lucky enough to buy. Uh, it's a vintage. And um, you can tell all it says is ethylic alcohol and fragrance. How's that? That is a note listing, my friend. Oh, you want to know what's in it? Um, how about fragrance? Uh, this is uh, galbanum, mandarin orange, neroli, jasmine, narcissus, rose, musk, vanilla, and vetiver. Unfortunately, that's all I have left. But I do have a 10 ml decant somewhere that's half full. Um, oh, it's so alluring. It's so beautiful. The galbanum, the green mixes with the oriental so well in both of these, the Musta Cartier and the um, uh, Crazy Crizia. Okay, let me show you a couple fragrances that uh, nobody talks about here. Uh, let's see, where did it go? Let me pull it up because I actually don't know the, uh, I don't know the note breakdown on this one. This is uh, a fragrance by the House of Shulton. Well, it was originally issued under Shulton, and then uh, in, in 1990, Shulton sold many of their fragrances to Procter & Gamble, and then Procter & Gamble turned around and sold them to Dana, which now produces them, uh, they're now produced under the label Eden Classics, and it sucks. Do not get the Eden Classics one. You will be disappointed, okay? Ram is telling you, do not get the Eden Classics. If you're interested in this fragrance, get the one that says Shulton on the back. That's what you want. You want the vintage Shulton version. This is called Rapport. So, Rapport is an 80s fragrance through and through. It's bergamot, geranium, galbanum, patchouli, cardamom, moss, what they call exotic woods and musk, and to my nose, some sort of civet that'll get you in the ballpark of something like Furyo or something like that. Uh, I don't like this as much as I like Furyo. I don't like this as much as I like Koros. I don't like this as much as I like Antaeus or Lapidus or anything like that. But if you're interested, you know, I got this for, again, 20 bucks or, or less or something. I think I paid maybe even 15 uh, if you find a deal on a vintage Shulton and you like those kind of fragrances, go for it. Okay, next on the list, we have some Lacoste fragrances. So in 1984, Lacoste put out this, which is still being produced, but it's different now. The one you want is the one that says, distributed by Sofapar, S-O-F-I-P-A-R. For the longest time, I saw like a 20 or 30 mil bottle on there for like 20 bucks. Uh, this is a 50 mil I got from a Nuge. And this is green and fresh and almost country club smelling. Like if you went to an 80s country club with those, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, shit. Who's that tennis player? Becker? You know, who, who used to wear those 80s tennis shorts? You're going to go to a country club just like that with the athletic socks pulled up. And, you know, your neon sunglasses, this is the scent to wear. It is so cool. Uh, galbanum, lavender, and geranium, basil, amber. Loads of vintage oak moss in the, in the vintage. A uh, little bit vetiver -y, dry down with, with woods. So classic to me. It's such a classic smell. Uh, that was 84. So make sure you get the one that is the version from 84 because the new one's shite. But uh, there's another one from 1991 called Lacoste Land. Look at what they used to do back in the day. Look at this presentation. How cool is this? This leather pouch is better than um, this leather pouch they used to give you for free is better made than 99% of the leather pouches you pay for nowadays. And how about this? Look at this. Is this not just a beauty? Again, sofa par. Uh, so Lacoste Land to me is like this insane mixture of Quorum meets uh, Eau de Hermes. But imagine you made all that for a 
walk in the walk in the park or to climb a mountain or to go outside and do something sporty. It has that athletic like vibe to it from 1991. It's before the aquatic wave came and washed everything away. There's galbanum and lavender in the top, and it makes it very alluring. It's very spicy, though. It's a very spicy fragrance. Lots of sage, lavage, uh, vetiver, oak moss, absolute, a little bit of benzoin. Very green and spicy, but beautiful. Love it. Um, and I'm so glad to have that bottle. Okay, next is a Lagerfeld, and this is Photo. Uh, unfortunately, this is a Unilever bottle, but I don't care. I'm just happy to have... A bottle. I'd love to have one of the older, you know, original, whatever they called it, Parfums Lagerfeld. But um, beautiful aldehydes in the opening. One of the most beautiful aldehydic openings in men's fragrances, period, with galbanum and honey and some woods in the dry down. It's woody. It's fresh. It's beautiful. I love this. This could easily be a niche fragrance today. Lagerfeld. Photo. Um... From 1990. And then we've got a Loewe fragrance, and this is called Essencia. Now, Essencia is now in a bottle that doesn't look like this anymore. Now they sell it in a bottle that looks like. Oh, let's see. What does it look like? Essencia. Oh, yes, it looks like this. Looks like this. This is an amazing fragrance too, but we'll talk about that some other day. Oh, I love it. Um, but Essencia is galbanum, uh, juniper, tarragon, lavender, basil, pine. Okay, if you're a pine fan, if you like polo green, uh, oak moss, leather, fir, tonka, vetiver, I would urge you to try Essencia. This is uh, an amazing green fragrance. Make sure you get the eau de toilette. Make sure you get the Eau de Toilette. Don't get the Eau de Parfum. Okay, next on the list, next on the list, we have a um, little sample I want to show you guys from the house of Mar Olfactif, which I've shown them before. I haven't talked about them on the channel yet, but hopefully I will soon, now that my nose is back in commission. Uh, you'll start getting some early impressions again very soon. This is Tempo Rubato. Tempo Rubato is a leathery floral fragrance with green galbanum, benzoin, orris butter, plum, apricot, petit gran, um, rosa alba ato, orange blossom absolute, uh, very interesting. Uh, it's an interesting house. No one talks about Mar Olfactif, but I will someday very soon. I hopefully will. And then let me show you one of my favorite spicy oriental fragrances no one talks about. This is Habanita. I love this stuff. I wish I had more than uh, 20, what is this, 25 mil or 30 mils or whatever it is. I wish I had more. This is the version from 1988. It originally came out in the 20s, I think, but this is Galbanum mastic and you know mastic can have this chewy gum like quality and this fragrance feels like there's lots of gum resins in it if that makes sense uh and galbanum is also i think a gum a resin from a tree and so you have galbanum but the mastic and the heliotrope combine because heliotrope also has that you know spongy um play doughy quality right with rose centrifolia, vetiver, elang, jasmine, amber, oak moss, vanilla, sandalwood, musk, and patchouli. Amazing, amazing fragrance. I love wearing this. Actually, I've gotten a lot of positive com uh, compliments wearing that. Not that I give a shit, but people do enjoy that on me. Uh, okay, next we're going to talk about a fragrance that has probably one of the worst lids I've ever come across. This is Missoni Uomo. This calf is just an absolute oh god but i love the fragrance and the the reason i found out about it is because keith manly sense uh sent me a sample thank god and i was like holy shit i've been sleeping on this uh it's my kind of fragrance leathery spicy green opening very early 80s you know basil with galbanum and juniper and patchouli and clove it's spicy and apparently there's real ambergris in the in the base. 
there's frankincense, tonka, leather, musk. You know, if you like the 80s leathers like I love, give this one a try. No one talks about it. It's worth giving a try. I think Anouj at Enchante still has some. Uh, and then a fragrance that everyone knows if you're a lover of 80s fragrances. This is Oscar de la Renta Pour Louis. Uh, love this scent. Spicy, woody. It's got that anise and aldehydic fresh opening. It's kind of like uh, hinting at fresher times. This fragrance is already kind of hinting at something a little different than Antaeus or Coros, and they haven't even came out yet. Um, there's a little bit of, um, it's like the winds are shifting with this fragrance, uh, but it still feels early 80s. It's lots of herbal, you know, sage and vintage spicy carnation, which can come across very green. So you mix that green carnation with the galbanum and the labdanum and the leather, uh, and it's a proper masculine could easily be a signature scent for me i love love this dna and i'm glad to have an older vintage Sano sanofi sanofi beauty bottle um okay next is a summer fragrance for me it's a summer fragrance uh it's a fruity sweet somewhat spicy but i really enjoy this fragrance i like it a lot it's minotaur by paloma picasso now the new version i hear is shite but I was able to procure a vintage um, Cosmere. You can't see it because the writing, you need a magnifying glass to see that writing. But it says Cosmere in there, trust me. This is from Anouge, uh, I think. And this is this aldehydic fruity opening, but it also has hints of the 80s, even though it's in the 90s. It's got the tarragon, the coriander, um, but it's very... Uh, it's very easy to wear for some reason in the in the um, warmer weather. The fruits and, and green touches with the floral, uh, woody, vanillic dry down. I really like that in the in the heat. Okay, now here's a fragrance you have to get the specific version of. This is Perry Ellis Cologne for Men. Make sure you get the one that says Cologne for Men. If you get the one that says Perry Ellis Eau de Toilette or whatever, you're going to throw this out the window. You're going to be like, Ramsey has completely lost his mind. Uh, this is leathery and spicy, and I think there is a lot of cumin in the opening of this that's not listed. There's bergamot, galbanum, clove, rose, leather, moss, vanilla, and I get a lot of cumin in the opening, but it, it, it does dry very quickly. It changes a little bit, uh, and the vintage is actually really stunning. You have to give this a shot. The green galbanum with that clove slash cumin combo is amazing 1985 best fragrance perry ellis has ever put out by far and then let me show you a fragrance i absolutely love that uses galbanum in the opening with aldehydes one of my favorite leathers if you like leather fragrances like i do you have to check this out this is bandy by the house of robert piguet and i just procured this backup I uh, haven't even had a chance to spray it yet. Maybe I'll wear it to bed tonight to make sure it's good. But um, yes, I've been working off of this uh, splash. And let me tell you something. Oh my God. Oh, the castorium, the leather mixed with the myrrh and civet and those animalic notes. The animalic leather is just, it just growls. It just growls. This fragrance growl. I can't believe this was made for women. It is... Um, uh, 1945, I think, Bandy came out. I've never smelled the new stuff. I think there's a new version, though, that I heard is not as good, but I don't know. Okay, let's talk about some roses real quick. So the first one is going to be uh, a fragrance called Apex, which I don't hate. I won't buy a bottle, obviously, but I don't hate it. It's green, it's spicy, it has galbanum with tobacco and rum and uh, it does have pineapple, which instantly people started to say Aventus. It doesn't smell anything like Aventus. Um, but there's lots of that Roja, you know, posh feet like Cashmeran and all these old school vintage fragrances we're talking about that have those rough edges. This isn't as rough. This is much more modernized. It's like a vintage fragrance for someone that doesn't want to wear a vintage fragrance, if that makes sense. But there is galbanum in here. It's part of the green aura that was created and then there's a fragrance that you guys know i absolutely love 
called Danger for them. And Danger is spicy, woody. The galbanum is in the base here, interestingly enough. So it opens up with lots of lavender and tarragon, and it dries to cumin, leather, uh, and to my nose, a little bit of civet. I think he made this a little more dirty than Guerlain's Heritage, and that does make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, Roja has a lot of fragrances that use that galbanum note. So one is called, and I plan on doing an early impression video of this one soon as well. Uh, this is called Elysium Porom. This is the extra, the pure parfum. And this is probably the most popular Roja right now, which you would think that would make it a little bit boring, and it does. Um, Elysium Porom smells like a blend of two very popular fragrances. One is uh, Aventus, and the other is Chanel's um, uh, Blue, Blue de Chanel is what it kind of smells like, but uh, the one that has the uh, frankincense, not the one that doesn't have the incense, the one that does have the incense. So Elysium kind of smells like a blend of those two. It's nice. The galbanum, again, is in the base. He uses it as a base note, but, uh, you know, and, and what's interesting is, I'm going to show you a couple of them here, and look at the trend. This is Herod's Porom, and this is bergamot. It's got that, let's say, a Kubiba note that tends to drag citrus. It really feels like you're smelling citruses way into the dry down. Uh, the galbanum, again, is in the base. Uh, are you getting kind of a trend here? La Oscar Porom. I have a full review or full video on this one. And I like this. There's lots of labdanum in here, which I really like with celery seeds and mayflower and carnation. Very interesting. I liked it a lot. Spicy Sheepra, basically. The galbanum is in the base. So you see, he's got this blueprint, almost, and he follows it over and over and over. Let me show you another one. You wouldn't expect it, but look at this. This is a little discovery deal, um, and I plan on doing a video on this when the weather turns. This is Oce Oceania, which I think was a Selfridges exclusive, uh, and you would expect it to be marine-like, and it is. It's got this Petrichor marine, Arolfa-like vibe, um, lavender and florals and stuff like that. Uh, the galbanum is in the base, okay? And, and so, again, it's just... Uh, he's got this DNA that I guess he thinks really works. Let me show you a couple others. Uh, so one is Oligarch. And I really like this fragrance. It's a shame it's discontinued. Um, Oligarch is... I don't know if you can see this, but look at that. Can you see what's floating? Like, let's see. Nope, it's not going to catch it. There's a... Sometimes it looks like... Uh, I can see it now. Can you see? Can you see? Like the lines inside of there. See them? Very interesting. But either way, Oligarch is an amazing citrusy fresh. Imagine the most posh version of uh, Terre de Hermes you've ever smelled. You know, lots of fruits and, but again, the galbanum is in the base, okay? Uh, beautiful fruity sheepra though. Very complex, very beautiful. Great for warm weather, in my opinion. Uh, and then he also did this fragrance, which is called Vetiver. And this is another one that I'll, I would wear in the warmer weather. Uh, and it's another one that has that, let's say, a Kubiba note. And it's another one that has the galbanum, guess where? You guessed it, in the base. With the caraway, nutmeg, um, even the pink peppers in the base. Very strange. Very strange breakdown. But uh, I've always thought Vetiver is just a take on a cheaper fragrance that, you know, he tried to make a little, seem a little different, more like a vetiver fragrance, but it's a, just a cheaper. Uh, Iris Silver Mist by Serge Luton's. Early impression of this coming very soon. Cold, powdery, floral iris with galbanum. God, it's beautiful. Man, that is so good. Oh, I would love a bottle of that, but it's so hard to find the vintage stuff. Um, and then I want to talk about a Tom Ford. This is Noir Anthracite, discontinued. If you like vintage fragrances, check this one out. This is a stunner of a fragrance. Spicy, woody, Sichuan pepper, ginger, galbanum, 
uh, tuberose, actually a tuberose and a designer I really love, patchouli, jasmine sambac, cedarwood, macassar wood, and Ceylonese sandalwood. That galbanum tuberose combination is insane. The patchouli is the most prominent note. Okay, so don't freak out uh, at the tuberose. But, um, okay, a couple more and then we'll be done. This is Dryad from the House of Papillon. Early impression coming very soon. Anytime. This could be anytime now. Uh, this is a long time coming. Oh, green sheepra that could give any of these green sheepras a run for their money. If you like stuff like this from the 70s, if you like these kind of green fragrances like number 19, um, I, I would highly urge you to give Dryad a try. I think it's an amazing take. It has beautiful iris, beautiful animalics. It's, it just proves that an amazing sheepra can still be made. Okay, couple more and then we'll be done. One is from the House of Zoologist and it's called Snow, Snowy Owl. And this is an earthy green fragrance. Uh, mint, coconut, snow, lily of the valley in the top with iris, snowdrop, white rose, mate, frankincense, and galbanum, ambrette, cedar, civet, musk, oak moss, um, tonka, and vanilla in the base. So the galbanum's in the mid in Snowy Owl. And finally, the last one, is Sacred Scarab. So this is Sacred Scarab, runner-up for me for Fragrance of the Year from 2022. Uh, I think this only lost out to Le de la Exquise to me. Aldehydes, lemon, civet, wine, plum, blue lotus, which is a note that uh, Rich Mitch talked about smelling in Russian Adams creations in his recent collection from the History of a Tar collection. And it is, there's a blue lotus note in one of those. It's a note that you're starting to see pop up a little bit more. You know, I think Bortnikov uses it, or maybe Peter from Centauri Fra Fragrances uses it. Uh, and But it's this raisin, green galbanum with resins and wine that just makes it so strange. This is such a interesting fragrance to me. It's really like you're in the desert and the sun is blaring down on you, you know, and you're smelling resins from... Egypt from thousands of years ago. It's that kind of feel. It, it it really is. It's I need to um I need to do a review on this. Nat, uh, Natalia requested it, so I I need to wear it more for a full review though. But maybe just talking about it more will help. But runner up of fragrance of the year for me. So that is my galbanum list. We kept it at an hour and twelve minutes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Let me know what your favorites are. I love seeing your faces in the comments. Please do leave a comment. Uh, I love checking them. I love responding. I love interacting with you guys. I learn more from you than you do from me, I promise. Uh, and I really have enjoyed doing these fragrances. This is probably one of the last, this is not a top 10, just not being ranked since we've gone through so many notes. If there are other notes you guys can think of, I mean, obviously we haven't gone through everything, but if there are other notes that I have not done yet uh, that you think would make a good, this is not a top 10, fragrance episode. Do leave it in the comments below. So cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. See you again next time. Bye-bye.